Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Anamo Kabul Wahab, and I'm a college math instructor. In today's video, we're going to look at how to differentiate functions. Now, if you're new to this video and this type of topic interests you, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Really subscribe to this channel. It's, it's an awesome channel. We learn lots of fun math stuff here. And of course, we're going to delve into other issues that concerns that concerns um, college students. So you'll find this channel very valuable for the future, even after you know, learning from you know, calculus from me. All right, so seriously, make sure that you subscribe to this channel right now before you watch the rest of the video. Also like, um, like and comment um, in the section below if there's any particular problem that you want me to solve to help you solve or to see on this channel, make sure you send it my way. My email is also available to you to send me an email if you have any questions regarding the things that are being done on this channel, like the type of videos, and if you have you know, um, advice for future videos, make sure you do send them my way. Now let's get started. So in this particular problem, um, problem session, it's gonna be a little, a little bit of a long video. So still till the end of the video, it's gonna be packed with a lot of values. So let's just get started. In case you're new to calculus and how to look at such kind of problems, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of introduction to, you know, to prime your mind on what to expect and to be able to see um, how we can apply some of these things um, you know, to solve problems. So let's just get started. So the first thing I would like um, to emphasize um, from the very beginning is to understand what, how, do, how we differentiate different functions. So I have already laid them down here for you. Um, so if I have, so let's just move to this side first and deal with this and deal with these basic functions. Okay, so if um, I have um, a polynomial function, so which was the first one, if I have a polynomial function, now a good way to differentiate this would be, is given here, it's gonna be n, so you bring the power to the side, x raised to the power, you reduce the power by one. So which means as an example, let's say I have um, um, x raised to the power four, now the derivative of this function would be what? Remember, I'll bring the four here, x, then reduce the power of four by one, right? So the answer will be four x raised to power three. It is quite that simple. Now, um, another variation of this is, let's say I have two x raised to power four. Now, what will be the derivative of this? It's still applicable, we use the same principle. All we have to do is that, remember the two will always stay there. So the derivative of this would be two times, bring the four down, as you know, then x reduce the four by one. So the answer will be eight x raised to power three. I think everyone understands now how we differentiate polynomials. Okay, let's move forward to trigonometry. This is, a trigonometry is a very, um, is a um, very, very direct to differentiate. So let's say I have sine x, the derivative of that is cos x, derivative of cos x is minus sine x. You just need to memorize through this. Of course, there's proof. For example, sine x cos x, you can actually prove this using first principle, which I will actually advise you. So in future videos, we are going to show how to differentiate sine x, cosine x, and um, these two functions using um, first principle. The same thing with this, right? We can actually differentiate the first three functions using the first principle, okay? Um, we will discuss that in a future video. And then for tan x, this can be done um, using um, quotient rule to actually differentiate tan x, but know that what the derivative of tan x is second square x, and derivative of second x is sec, um, sec, um, sec x tan x, um, derivative of lin x is one over x, exponential is the same thing as e raised to power x, a raised to power x, derivative of that would be a raised to power x lin a, and so on and so forth. And when you have log x base a, derivative of that is one over x log e base a. All right, so these are the things that, um, these basic functions, you have to know them. Now, upon understanding how this works, the next thing is to understand the techniques of differentiation, which means the addition rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, the, um, um, then you also need to know implicit differentiation. And once you understand this, all of these things, you are good to go with any differentiation problem. 
Okay, so let's um, let's dive into some of these rules. Some of these rules. Now, I want you to note. I want you to note that um, without these rules, we can't actually approach the problems that I have set in this um, in this particular video, right? So let's just review what those rules are. Now, the first rule is um, has to do with what product, right? So let's say I have a product of two functions. One is u multiplied by v. Notice that what u and v are also functions of x. So therefore, y is a function of x. So what I mean is y is what u of x times what v of x, right? So y is a function of x. Now in finding the derivative, so notice that what these notations are the same, dy dx or y prime, both the same thing. Now notice that the derivative of this, uh, we can show this with proof. We're not going to go into that in these videos. These videos are just learning videos for you to know how to solve problems. It's focused on problem solving. So just take what you need to know to be able to solve problems that have to do with derivatives. Basically, that is it. So let's look at how to find the y dx. So the y dx, y prime, in this case would be, we leave this function u, we multiply it with the with the derivative of v with respect to x, plus we leave v of x, we multiply it with the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, another way to write this, because most people are confused, right? Another way to write this, simply you can say v, now v prime, we can say dv dx, right? Plus v times what? du dx. So whichever way you write it, or some people can even write u uh, v prime plus v, u prime. So whatever variation you're comfortable with, that is quite fine. Uh, some people could actually write u dv plus v du, right? Uh, these are quite fine, basically, all right? So, um, so that is what the product rule is. Let's apply this though. Let's apply this to simple problem before we go into a more complicated problem in this problem solving session. Now, let's say I have um, this function. So let's say, let's just make it easy, x squared times cos x. Now, when do you use this rule? Because the most difficult part is, is identifying which rule belongs to which function, right? Which rule to use first when you see a function. Now, um, I do believe that you can recognize this by the way the function is set up for you. Right, much more like when you have a board math, right? We have a problem of arithmetic. Let's say I have two plus X, I mean, two plus five minus three times four. Now, how do you evaluate this? For example, right? We, um, or let's say you have this, right? How do you evaluate such kind of thing? Remember the rule that we have to do the bracket first, then so, um, so in Nigeria, we use board maths, which means bracket first, off is next, then division, then multiplication, addition, and subtraction, right? Now it's, it's similar, right? So you can actually um, um, do this arithmetic by looking at the multiplication and um, um, the bracket first. Then next thing is that you do this multiplication and then you now do the subtraction next. So this would have been seven minus 12 and that would be minus five, right? Now it's same thing with, um, with calculus. So how do you know which one comes first? Um, there's basically an unwritten rule that what, um, you, we actually have division. Now, it all depends on how the problem is set up for you, right? But um, we do division mostly first and then multiplication, right? Um, so it actually goes in this direction. Then we have other um, chain rule in between that and all of that. So, but usually when you see a function, you have to see if division or multiplication is the overall um, way to see the problem, right? So for example, when I look at this, all I say is what x squared multiplied by what cos x. So it's because of the way I call the function, I would know which rule will dominate in this particular problem, okay? So because I have x squared multiplied by cos x, so I would know that what I can, how the way I call the function is the way I'll make my substitution, right? So I can say, okay, let this one be u, let this one be v. Now I know that what I will have to use, y becomes u times v. So I know I will know that I have to use a multiplication rule, the product rule, if you say, if you may say, 
right? So in this case, what, what would I mean? Our u is what x squared, our v is what cos x. Now, y will become u times v. Now, how do we find y prime? Um, don't forget, you quickly write a formula because that would guide you, right? It means now I need to take the derivative of v, I need to take the derivative of u because I have the term here and I don't know what they are for yet. So I need to find those first. So what is the derivative of v, which is v prime? It's the derivative of cos x, which is what? Minus sine x. And then I'll come to this. What's the derivative of x squared? That is 2x. Now I have something to work with. So which basically means, um, which basically means my y prime will basically be u, which is x squared times v minus sine x. Make sure you put bracket around it plus, um, uh, plus v, which is cos x and times v, u prime, which is 2x. Right? Now you just simplify these things together. Um, it's not a big deal. And you arrive at your final answer, right? So I think it's not so complicated. It's something that you can really learn, okay? Now, as we go through this problem, you'll see all the other rules. So this is just product rule, just to give you a taste of what it looks like. Now, um, I'm assuming that you have a little bit of background on this, so um, I'm not gonna do so much. Um, you can literally see what is happening. Now, the next thing is the, um, is the quotient rule, right? So we said this was what? Product rule. Now, what is the quotient rule? The quotient rule simply means, quotient means division. When you have a function of x dividing another function of x. So now you can see when you have a problem of this nature, you quickly know that what you have to use quotient rule. So now it depends on your substitution that will tell you what you need to use, right? All right, so I'm gonna give you a problem after this to actually kind of throw you off to see if you can figure it out. So whenever you see product of functions, you know it is product rule. Now, how would you know? You can simply substitute u for one of the functions and v for the other one so that you can see that what this product rule that will have to happen. In this case as well, for quotient rule, when you see division of functions, you can substitute u for the numerator and v for the denominator. That tells you that what you have to use quotient rule which is division rule, which is what I was studying. So division rule actually comes with a form multiplication and we'll see um, in a couple of examples. And sometimes you can even look at product of two functions um, as, uh, you can look at division of two functions as product rule. Yeah, and they actually almost the same thing, right? If you may, but don't bother yourself so much about that. Let's just focus on um, how we apply quotient rule. Now for quotient rule, when you have division of two functions, u and v, now the, so, the solution to this is y prime, which is the y, what I mean by, by y prime is the y dx, will be calculated as what? v of x times u prime of x minus u of x times v prime of x all over v square, right? Now, a simple way to write this is just say v, u prime minus u v prime over what v squared. Now, some people are even more comfortable with writing as what v du minus u dv over what v squared. And I think this is the most popular one. So um, you should just memorize how this works, how this operates, just like we memorized in the case of product rule, you need to memorize in the case of quotient rule. Now, what does this mean? Let's just apply this to a problem and um, that will suffice. So let's just pick a simple problem to apply this thing to. So let's say I have x squared over, so similar function x squared over cos x. Now you can basically see that well, this is division of two functions, right? And to confirm, to confirm if you are right that you have to use quotient rule, not product rule, not chain rule, um, in looking at this problem at first, all you do is well, substitute values another variable for the functions. So just say, okay, let x square, so let x square be u and let cos x be v. Now this makes it clear that what you're dealing with quotient rule, okay? So, um, so let's just say u is x square and v is what cos x. 
Now, according to the formula for this um, for this quotient rule, we need to find du dx. We need to find dv dx. So du dx again. We um, so I'll just write u prime is two x, and then v prime we got it as what minus sine x. So we are ready to apply the quotient rule. So dy dx would be again v du minus u dv over v squared. Now what is v? Cos x multiplied by du. Multiply by du. What is du here? Or what is du? 2x minus u, which is x squared, times dv, which is minus sine x, all over all over v squared. What is v square? Um, that is cos square x. Or you can say cos x all squared. So it's either you write it this way or you say this way. They are both the same thing. But this is not never this way. Don't write it this way. This is wrong, right? These are not equal. So these two are the same, but not the same thing as writing it as what cos x squared. This will be wrong, okay? So these are the two ways to write it. Now, we have this. We can simply finish this problem. That's 2x cos x plus x squared sine x all over cos square x. Now, and this will be your answer. You don't really have to simplify this in any further. This is fine. Um, it's, it's in this simple, simplest form. There are some problems that you have to expand to make it easier. Now, let's look at another problem here. I, I have a feeling that you're not satisfied with just this problem, with just this solution. So let's look at something like this. Um, okay, so let's not complicate things. Let's just say 2x cubed minus one. Okay, let's say you have quotient of this function, right? You can see the numerator can be substituted. You can substitute a variable, another variable for the numerator and another variable for the denominator. So that tells you it's quotient rule. So we can quickly say, let u be x squared plus 2x and let v be what? 2x cubed minus one, okay? Now let's see how do we solve um, how do we solve this problem? So, okay, so let's focus on this problem. So how do we solve this problem? Very easy. Um, we need to find, um, remember, we know it's gonna be quotient rule. So y prime is uv prime minus, I mean, um, sorry, is vdu, so vu prime minus u v prime over v square. Okay, now we need to find u prime. u prime is just derivative of this with respect to x, which is derivative of this plus derivative of this. That will be, remember, derivative of um, polynomial, that is 2x plus um, derivative of 2x, which is 2. Then what about v prime? Derivative of 2x cubed is just 3 times 2, 6x raised to power 3 minus 1, right? And then derivative of of a constant is zero. So we are just learning so many things on the go, right? So I hope you're picking on all of these things. Anytime I take the derivative, if I have a constant, um, which means for example, y is five, derivative of this is zero, right? That's what I've just shown. And you can see that what, when I have addition of two functions and I'm taking the derivative of that, of that addition, it's just some, it's just addition of individual derivatives of the function. So this is why when I have, this derivative of this part would be the derivative of this part plus derivative of this, which is how I got 2x plus 2. So these are the things that you should be picking up on as we are going through these examples. Now, derivative of v, prime, um, of v is just 6x squared. As you can see, 3 times 2, x raised to the power 3 minus 1. Fine. OK, I think everyone is cool with this. Now, let's quickly write the answer to this. V is 2x cubed minus 1 times u prime, then minus u, what is u? x squared plus 2x times v prime, which is 6x squared, all over v squared. Right? Now, 
when you have a problem like this, we are, you are expected to simplify the numerator. The denominator is already simplified because it's product of two, of, um, of two factors, right? 2x cubed minus 1 times 2x cubed minus 1. That is exactly what you are expected to do. To simplify means what to factorize the expression. So now we need to first expand and then factorize things out. OK? All right. Um, I mean, there are many ways to deal with this. Uh, one way is to bring x out here and then factorize 2x plus 2 out. But notwithstanding, we can just expand everything and see what we have. OK, so 2x cubed times 2x, so that will give us 4x raised to the power 4. Then 2x cubed times 2, that is plus 4x raised to the power 3. Then minus 1 times 2x, that's minus 2x. Then minus 1 times 2, that is minus 2. Then come to the right-hand side, we have, so you can actually bring this 6x squared to the front, right, in order not to confuse you. So that will be minus 6x squared. I can write this as what? Um, 6x squared multiplied by x squared plus 2x to avoid mistakes because I see that students make mistakes um, all the time due to, this, um, due to these things, okay? So now, how do we, we simplify this thing again? So 6x squared multiplied by x squared becomes 6x raised to power 4. Then 6x squared multiplied by this becomes, um, don't forget there is minus here, right? So minus 6x squared times this is minus 6x raised to power 4. Then minus 6x squared times 2x, that's minus 12x raised to the power 3. Then all over 2x cubed minus 1 squared. So when you simplify the C, we have some, some terms with the same variable. So we add those together. So 4x raised to the power 4 minus 6x raised to the power 4, that will be minus 2 x raised to the power 4. Then we also have 4x raised to the power 3 minus 12x raised to the power 3. That is minus 8x raised to the power 3. Then we have minus 2x minus 2 all divided by what? 2x cubed minus 1 all squared. So at this juncture, this is fine. So you can leave your answer in this form. I don't think any um, anyone will be complaining about that. Also, although you can simplify a little bit further, you can factorize if you want, but it's not necessary. You don't have to go through that housing, right? So this, this, this will be the solution to this particular problem. Now, the last thing I would like to mention, so this is just a teaching model. We haven't gone into the problem of this particular uh, video, which we are going to go into in the next video. But for now, I just want to give you a background of differentiation and have a feel for it. And so for you to kind of soak in some information about this before we delve into the problems and we use these rules we are learning in this video into future videos, okay? All right, so now what's the next thing? The next thing is the chain rule. Now, what is this chain rule really talking about? Now, the chain rule is when you have nested functions and when you have it, you're going to know as well like this is, these things are not hidden, right? Uh, just like you can recognize quotient rule, you can recognize product rule. You could also, you should also be able to recognize chain rule. Now, what is chain rule? Chain rule is whenever I have a function, right? F of X, that's the function. But it turns out that what um, we can, we can rewrite this function F of X as what? Um, f of another function v, and then v in turn would be a function of x. Also, um, okay, so um, le let me put it this way. So v would be a function of x, okay? Right, in a way, right? So this is what we mean by convolution of two functions. So like you have one function, then you have another one before you actually get to X. So basically what I mean is this, for Y, um, before you get to X, you pass through another function V first before you get to X, right? This is why we call it a chain. So a good example of this is, so let me just give you several examples um, to understand what um, chain rule is all about. Okay, so um, a good example of this is this, let's say, I have this function. So um, let's say I have this function. Let's say 2x plus 1 raised to the power 5. 
Uh, let me give you another one. Let's say I have cosine of x squared minus 2x. Um, let's say I have sine 6x. Let's say I have lean of cos x. OK. Um, let, uh, let's even make it more complicated. Let's say I have e raised to power cos 5x. OK, now why are this? Why are we going to use chain rule to solve these problems? Um, let me explain. Now, when you look at these functions, what you see is that well, there, are, there are two or more nested functions together as one. Now, that's the first clue. The function must be nested together as one function, as one function. So as you can see, 2x plus 1 raised to power 5. This is just one function. Right, that is when you know chain rule will come into place. But the functions that are nested to them must be two or more, two or more basic functions. Let me explain why are they two or more. Now think about this. For this first one, um, so when you nest two or more functions together, there will be an internal function and an external one, right? The internal one is the is the innermost function, the one that you evaluate. Um, the um the first if you if you will if i might say the one that you have to evaluate first before we go to the outer function to evaluate it so what i mean by evaluating that function the internal one first is this let's say in the for, in the first one i ask you to what is y when x when x is equal to one what do you do first you have to evaluate two x plus one first so that would be so your y would be okay two times one plus one or is to power five. So you would have to evaluate the, this internal one first, which is three, before you now evaluate power of five, which will now give us some number, right? Now, this tells you that the one that you have to evaluate first when I substitute a value for X is called the internal function, right? Now, the one I have to evaluate last is called the external. Although they are nested together as one function, Okay, now when you have this, what you do is what you have to substitute a variable for the internal function. This is usually the trick for chain rule. Now, when I look at this now, it becomes apparent that what, what I will substitute V for would be the internal function. Remember, I told you V will be a function of X, right? Then when this happens, what will happen to Y? Y can now be written as what? A function of V, as you can see. Now, this is when you know that what you have chain rule. When I have two or more functions um, intertwined or nested together as one function. Okay. Now, this is our substitution. Substitution will always be for the internal function. Now, let's look at this one. Our substitution again will have to be for this internal function because when I substitute value for x, I will have to evaluate the internal function first. I think that makes sense, right? So this gives us, oh, in this case, um, we'll say V is what? X squared minus two X, and which means Y will be what? Cosine of V. Now, when you have this relationship, note, note that what you are having chain rule, because to get to X, you have to pass through another variable V, okay? Sometimes you might have two or more, two or more nested functions, right? Which you'll see in the next couple of examples. Now, for this one, again, I will substitute for the innermost function, which is 6x, which means y will be what? Sine v. And for this one, similarly, now, um, for this one, what would you do? Right? v would be what? The cosine of x, that's the internal function. And then y would be what? Lean v. Okay? And finally, for this one, notice something that in here we have three nested function now. We have E, we have cosine, and we have 5x, okay? Now, we can actually use three nested functions to solve this. So what I'll say is what? Oh, let U be the innermost one, 5x. Now let V be the next one, which is cosine of U, right? And let Y, be, um, let um, the last one be what? Um, U raised to power what? V, right? So you can see then we, we are doing two substitutions, one um, for um, one for the cosine and the other one for what? 5x, 
Okay. So it, it actually depends on you. Some in some some people, now when you become very skilled at this, what happens is you could quickly say, okay, let V be the cost 5X because you know how to differentiate this thing very, um, very well. So you just leave it like as you, you nest two functions together. So the problem becomes how to solve something like this, right? You see they are similar, right? So you could do this, V equal to cost 5X and then look at Y as what E raised to power V. Right, so it depends on you. You can so in solving this problem, you have to do the substitution again, as you can see, right? Um, in order to use chain rule to solve that again, right? So in this particular third one, you have two chain rules, right? The first one is to um, is the um, is the higher level where I make v um, as cos five x. And y will be e raised to the power v, and I'll find the different. Uh, I'll find the derivative of y with respect to x that way. But in finding the derivative of v with respect to x, I have to first of all what I have to also differentiate v with respect to x, which is also a chain rule. Now let's actually solve these problems. And after solving this, that will be the end of this particular video. So just stay with me to the end. Now, how do you solve problems that have to do with chain rule? It so happens that, remember we said we have to go through the chains, right? So first of all, make sure you write your chain. Why we are, right, we are going through V before we go through X. So in order to find the Y, the X, so to go from this route to this route, it's same thing as going from Y to V, then V to X. So that means I'll find, first of all find the Y, the V, and I'll multiply it with what? dv dx, okay? That is how I do chain rule. So basically what happens is, I'll find the derivative of this function, multiply it with the derivative of this one. Find the derivative of this one, multiply it with the derivative of this. And that's how I'll do throughout, um, throughout any time I want to use chain rule. Now let's look at the first problem. Let's see how we can solve that. So y equal to v raised to the power five, and then v is what? Two x plus one. Okay, now I need to find the y dv. We, all, we know how to find that, which is um, which is what the derivative of y with respect to v, which is just um, the differentiation, differentiation of polynomial. So this is going to give us 5v raised to the power of 4. Now, what about dv dx? This would give us just 2, right? Now, dy dx is just when I multiply this to dy dv times dv dx, which means 5v raised to the power 4 times 2, which is 10v raised to the power 4. Now, before you finish this problem, you have to substitute what v is, right? Remember, v is 2x plus 1. So this gives you your answer using chain rule. You see, it's quite easy, right? So let's look at the second one. And I'll give you others as, a, as exercise to do. Now, y is what cos v, and v is what x squared minus 2x. So all I need to do is what? Find dy dv, which is the derivative of y with respect to cosine. Um, we call it cos, cos v, uh, with, I mean, with respect to v, it's just going to be minus sine v, right? Don't forget. And then dv dx is going to be 2x minus 2. Perfect. Now you can um, find the y dx, which is just multiplication of these two, which is minus sine v, multiplied by what? 2x minus 2. So that will be minus, what is sine V? What is V? V is just X squared minus two X. Don't forget, multiply by what's two X minus two. And this is your final answer. You don't need to simplify for that because it's just product of two functions. All right, cool. What about the third one? All right, I'll give you the last one to figure out. Um, so let me leave the third and the fourth one for you. So do this and do this. So let's just do the last one. So the last one um, says what? Um, U is, we are looking at U as 5X, V as what cos U, and then Y as what E raised to power V. Remember that the initial function was E raised to power cos 5X. We substitute a variable for 5X, another variable for cosine, of this 5x and then finally y will be e raised to the power that substitution, which is what we have. Now, in this case, notice that what we are going from y to v and v to u and then u to what x. Now, 
we want to find the y the x the other route which is going from um, y to x and this will be the y dv going from y to v first then dv du from v to u then from u to x simple as that now let's find the y dv the y dv is just derivative of this with respect to v it's just exponential function so it's just going to be the same thing e raised to power v now what about dv du derivative of cos u it's just going to be what minus sine u very good and finally derivative of u with respect to x that would be what just five so which means derivative of this function with respect to x is just five so now i can multiply all these derivatives together to find dy dx which is very cool which is e raised to the power v times minus sine u times five so i'll have five e raised to the power v times let's say put minus here sine u now let's substitute v and u back now v is what um don't forget v is what v is just um cosine um u which is cosine 5x and then sine what is u u is what 5x so this will be your final answer okay now this is when you want to solve chain rule by breaking every time everything all the functions down to the smallest detail right so you can actually do this right but there are other there are other techniques other quicker way of looking at um chain rule that I'm going to um, show you next, but that would be in the next video when I'm solving this other problem. So I can quickly tell you how I'm thinking about this. But just to give you a quick hint on how this works is, now that I know that chain rule is basically moving um, from one variable to another variable and having an in-between variable that I have to move towards, like having an intermediate variable V. Now, if I want to, take any derivative, I can just do it in my head, um, substituting the values in my head and just trying to follow, the, follow this principle, right? I know that I have to multiply the derivatives together and just multiply them. Now, um, just to cap this video um, with, that, um, with that idea, so let me just show you what I mean by that. So um, another way to solve, let's say you have chain rule in between a problem that you're trying to solve. Let's say you have chain rule in between product rule or um, quotient rule. Now, you don't want to spend your time trying to go into the details of substitute value for V and then doing this thing over and over again. That will take a long time. And quite frankly, it's not a good, it's not an efficient way to solve a problem. So you should have this in, at the back of your mind as well. Let's say I wanted to take derivative of this, right? Now, this is chain rule. I know it is chain rule because this is, this is nested function, two functions nested together, cosine and 5x, right? So all I will do is what, I know this would be the internal function and this would be the external, right? So all I will do is what, find derivative of external multiplied by derivative of internal. That is all I will need to do. Now, if I have three functions nested together, I will go from external to the internal to the innermost one. That is how it works, okay? So this would be derivative of external fun function means derivative of cosine, which is just minus sine. Minus sine of what? Whatever is inside of that cosine, okay? Multiply by derivative of the internal, which is just derivative of 5x is just five. So I know my answer is minus five sine 5x. You see how easy it is um, to use um, chain rule, right? Another example is, let's say I have lean cos, um, let's say x squared. Now this is convolution of three functions. You can see there's lean function, there's cosine, and then there's x squared. Basically derivative of the external times derivative of the middle, times derivative of the inside, multiply them together. So which means derivative of lean function is just one over whatever is inside the lean function. So that'll be one over x cos x squared. Multiply by derivative of the middle one, which is derivative of cosine, which is just minus sine of whatever is inside the cosine, which is what x squared. And finally, multiply by 
derivative of the inside, which is derivative of x squared, which is just 2x. You see how chain rule is very cool, right? It can be done very easily. So that's minus 2x sine x squared all over cos x squared. So this will be the answer to the problem, right? So you can actually write that as minus 2x tan x squared. Okay, because sine x squared over cos x squared simplifies towards tan x squared. Now that will give us the end, um, that will give us the solution that we are seeking. I hope this video is very helpful in understanding how derivatives work in general. There is more to this, there is inverse derivative, there's derivative of negative powers, all of those, we are going to learn those through other problems that we'll be solving together, right? But this is just the backbone of what derivatives and how to find them using the different techniques that are available to us. So thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this, um, to this channel to help its growth so that other students like you can benefit from this channel. Also share this on your social media to allow other students like you from, from, your, class, from your classes to be able to benefit from this channel as well. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.